Hallelujah. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. For we will rejoice and be glad in him. <clears throat> I want to thank you all as I appreciate the grace of God that has continued to work upon us even in this time. We are privileged to <clears throat> fight a moment of this nature and even a time that we can agree and uh, share uh, concerning matters of the kingdom of God. I want to thank you all also for joining me and uh, like we say, this is a forum where we fellowship together. This is a moment to go and keep encouraging each other. And I keep telling you, please, as you watch, keep sharing, bring a friend on board. Let's all agree that we need one another. I want to thank you also because you've continued to uh, be an encouragement to me every time I see you on the Facebook. Even if I don't comment, but I like your statement, just get to know that from the deepest part of my heart, I do appreciate you all. Uh, this evening, it's a fellowship, and we want to pray so that we go to the Word. Let's pray together. <clears throat> Our Heavenly Father, King of glory, we worship you and adore you. We have a moment to thank you this particular evening. God Almighty, we invite your presence as we invoke your name, knowing God that there is no other name that is given among men for salvation apart from the name Jesus Christ. And God, we want to thank you for today. And as we share <clears throat> with my brothers and sisters, my viewers from all parts of this world, I want to pray, God, that you visit their lives. My prayer is that today your word will bring change into our lives. Your word will bring transformation. Your word will make us all what you want us to be. Heavenly Father, <clears throat> we are still standing in the gap because of the nations that are in agony. Father, when we look at the matter to do with this pandemic that has caused nations even to seem crippled in so many areas, in so many affairs, we want to pray that the grace of God, which remains sufficient through Jesus Christ, shall be the portion of every nation. We want to thank you, loving Father, because as a people, as a community, in this social media, in this network, Lord, we have a reason to thank you because we are alive. We have been preserved by your mercies. Thank you, Jehovah God. Blessed be your name. Use me to reach the hearts of people. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen <clears throat> and amen. My brothers, I'm coming to you from a Jesus New Life Ministries, from the office of the bishop, from this particular desk where I say that in Jesus New Life Ministries in Jenelim, we believe that God is raising a life to real meaning. Raising a life <coughs> to real meaning. This is our mission. It is the mission that God put in my heart that it is good to declare and to work towards that purpose that lives may be raised <coughs> to their real meaning, including your life. Join me as I take you to Joshua chapter number 5. We're going to look at this chapter 
And like I have promised earlier on this uh, uh, Facebook page, I promise that the topic tonight will be its circumcision first. In other words, it is circumcision first. This looks like a very unique. It may look like very curious a topic to look into. And for sure it is. I say again, it is circumcision first. Uh, <clears throat> those of you who have been keenly following my teachings, when you are preparing to join the new year 2020, the Spirit of God gave me a topic, and the topic that I handled and that has been actually the theme of the year, it is well labeled and written with bold letters, even within our sanctuary, that the year 2020 is the year of unlimited harvest. And that is not a contradiction when we compare that um, issues of harvest with what we are going through this particular moment. It is not a contradiction because I say it clearly. When you see the children of Israel, and I think this is the journey I want us to walk uh, together today as we look into uh, this chapter. I may not read the whole of it, but I'll be mentioning some verses part by part. From verse number 1, we'll be dealing up to verse number 12. This is important to note that uh, the year begins with a lot of expectations and people have themes, people have even what we call their objectives, their goals, and they even put it in writing in bold letters. And many people could be asking themselves, how come that uh, no theme was very clear telling us we shall be locked down in our homes, we shall fight it in this manner? I want to tell you the message was very clear. And this is what we are going to see. And uh, verse number one, that it came to pass when all the kings of the Amorites, which were on the side of Jordan, westward, and all the kings of the Canaanites, which were by the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan from before the children of Israel until we were passed over, that their hearts melted. Neither was their spirit in them anymore because of the children of Israel. Verse 2. At that time, the Lord said unto Joshua, Make these sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel at the second time. And Joshua made his sharp knives and circumcised the children of Israel of Israel as at the heel of the four skins. Let me pause there before we continue to verse 4. And I want to show you something very important that they have just arrived in the land of promise. That was Canaan. These are none other than the children of Israel who you know very well they left the land of Egypt where they suffered for over 400 years according to what had been said by God to Abraham that your descendants will be in a foreign country and they will be mistreated for 400 other versions talk of 430 years. And it happened that God had mercy on them according to God's way of remembering his own. The Bible says very well that as we read Exodus chapter number 2 and verse 24 that God 
as much as he heard their cry and he saw their frictions, he remembered his covenant. I want you to know that God always, as he deals with us, a God is a God of covenant. And when he remembers a covenant, he is about to do something. When he remembered, he sent the man we call Moses to go and rescue the children of Israel, to bring them now to the promised land. Now, the Bible records so much about the 40 years they were through the wilderness. You remember the many issues that were taking place, even from the time they were crossing over the Red Sea. It was not a simple thing even for Moses because there were a lot of complaints and even throughout the wilderness. But imagine the people have arrived in Canaan and instead of starting celebrating and taking the produce and eating the food of the Lord, the thing God brings to Joshua is that may you take sharp knives and circumcise the men. What is all this about? It is recorded as you continue to verse 4, even through verse number 6. The reason why God is demanding that Joshua would take a knife to circumcise the men is because this particular man were not circumcised. All those that were circumcised in Egypt died in the wilderness. And remember, there was no celebration of circumcision or the covenant of circumcision practically performed on anyone throughout the wilderness. So that is why I would say even the one who was born after they crossed Red Sea. That one, even if he was 40 years, by the time they are getting to the land of Canaan, 40 years plus, that one was still uncircumcised. And that is why you need to see something very important here. All those who died in the wilderness, why did they die? Yet they were men enough. They were men of the covenant because this covenant of circumcision, get me right, it is started by Father Abraham according to Genesis chapter number 17. You remember when Abraham was 99 years old, that is the time he got circumcised. And it is God who told him from now, because I'm changing your name from Abram to Abraham. There has to be change of status for a name and identity to change. And so you find Abraham started and he was told every male child, whether of your own or from your servant and both servant and the slaves or strangers, they must be circumcised. I'm bringing a point home. Why now Joshua is being taught to circumcise these particular ones? The Bible says again, mark the Bible very clearly. It is not that they were being circumcised twice. No, it is because a new generation is getting formed. Actually, this is what many people call the Joshua generation. That is why it is called again. It's like the second time because the first generation perished in the wilderness because of murmuring, complaining, and all manner of evil they did before God. So now Joshua is told, now these ones you have, it is time you take sharp knives and circumcise them. I have an example of a sharp knife. Here I'm holding. You can imagine such a knife. Men have just arrived in the land of celebration, the land of promise. They are supposed to enjoy, to start now being happy. Just like many people, 
discovered that they found themselves in the year 2020, which had so many promises, unlimited harvest, the year of great things that you have prophesied, the year of recovery, the year of restoration, the year of great manifestation. We all wanted to celebrate. And actually we felt good a bit. January, we were there. But what has happened? We have seen a difference. Things have not worked according to our expectation. But let me tell you, nothing is lost. Very soon we are going to find the great harvest, the unlimited harvest. But when Joshua took the knives and started circumcising them, what do you see, my brothers and sisters? I see something very unique. That when, the, when all of them, look at this, it's, a, it's indicated here in verse number 7. The children whom he raised up in their stead, in the stead of those who died, them Joshua circumcised, for they were uncircumcised because they had not circumcised them by the way. And it came to pass when they had done circumcising all the people that they abode, they remained in their places in the camp till they were healed. They stayed in the camp. This is the message I would like you to know. It is not good to think that when they were in the camp, nothing was happening. I want to tell you sometimes when God is dealing with us, before we get to possess the promise, sometimes he may not be dealing with what we want him to do. He deals sometimes with us. He is now putting people in the camp. I don't know what you think when you look at this man. They were the heads of the families, but they were right in the camp until they healed. Circumcision comes with its own diverse dimensions and even uh, uh, repercussions as people may look at them. Circumcision comes even with many interpretations. I know even now there are people who look at it from a different angle. But I want to tell you the reason why they were coming to this point of circumcision is because Ari alone, they were taking things for granted. They never saw God seriously. They never received his word according to the intent and the intentions of God. These are the people who were trained by their fathers who died in the wilderness that they can complain any time. They could argue, they could murmur, they could even discredit the miracles of God. Now they are in the camp for a time. They could not start eating the fruit of the Lord before circumcision. I would wish to say, as we are dealing with this topic, that it is circumcision first. It is meant to bring people to maturity. It is meant to bring people to an understanding so that they may be men of stature, both physically and emotionally. We can also say mentally and spiritually. They were meant to be now men who have trained, who are kept in a camp until the healing. Even today we know in the communities of circumcision, we know what happens that in that time of seclusion, this is where a lot of training is done. So God had an intention that when the men were in the camp, 
He is going to teach them and train them. I'm comparing this with what we have today. And because I said it when we were approaching the new year, that God is going to bring us to the Lord of unlimited harvest, the year 2020. But circumcision had to proceed. Could it be, and these are the questions I would ask ourselves, could it be even in the current lockdown and the quarantine, could this be even the, the limited movement that we have been subjected to? Could this be like the circumcision camp? I would say God has an intention. We are not hiding because this is a fact that anything you find shaking the earth in this manner like COVID-19, it is not from anywhere else, whether made by men, whether made from wherever, whether forced by devils, it has been allowed in the presence of God. God is watching. God is not asleep. The keeper of Israel slumbers not. But it has been allowed. And I want to say, it is after this kind of a camp that we are going to move out with a stature, with that formation, with that kind of life that we glorify God, that we thank God for all things in all situations. We will learn to appreciate God. We will learn to say, God, thank you for everything. We used to eat manna in the wilderness, yet we could complain. Food made for angels and by angels, a miraculous diet, but a lot of complaining. My brothers and sisters, if you look at this, you discover when they were kept in this camp, it was not simple. It was not easy. They had pain. The infliction of pain on their bodies. God knew that circumcision is not smooth. There is pain. What about today? People are going through pain. Mothers are having the emotional pain, and especially those that have nothing enough to cook for their children at this time. Businesses have come down. People are not easily getting even the casual labor to earn something so that they put a plate on the table. It is painful, but hold on. This is a camp. We will still come out. We will still come out. And we shall find ourselves eating the best of the Lord. I'm here to encourage you. You could be worried. You are a businessman, a businesswoman. Your commodities are rotting. They are getting expired. You don't know what to do. And things are not working the way you wished from the beginning of the year. I'm here to say in the name of Jesus, God who understands our rising and our setting will still bring us out of this camp. I want to say again, it is circumcision first. When this man was circumcised in this chapter 5 of Joshua number uh, in Joshua chapter number 5, you find in that moment, I can imagine what they were thinking. Maybe they would have complained against Joshua. Why have you subjected us to this? Even when they were in the wilderness, since they were born, they had not seen such an experience. There is nowhere they could hear of a camp of them that are circumcised. They are the ones now experiencing this. I want to say yes. Sometimes we are going through issues we've never experienced. We've never heard about. I've talked even with some old people who are eating something plus to know whether they were even getting history 
of the 1920s, the, the flu that was mentioned, but they are not getting it. This is a strange thing to all of us. But I want to say this. <clears throat> when God is allowing us to be in such a camp, and because we have accepted to go through, because I want to urge you today, please accept it. Whatever you find at times coming between where the promise was said and where the promise is to be received, whatever comes in between, like this camp of circumcision, it is not meant to destroy you. It is meant to build you. God has an intention to make you better so that you enjoy the benefits and the fruits of his promise in a better way. Listen to this. Some of us, maybe we are the types that we've been complaining there before. I want to be so practical. Some wives, women at home, may be used to complain. You didn't take it seriously. Thankfully, when your husband was walking out of the house and going for work every day coming back, you took it for granted. Even when salary was given and money is shared to you to have food in the house, maybe you are the one I'm talking to your husband now. The job was suspended. Now the husband is at home. What would you say now? Could, could we take it seriously now and we learn to be thankful to God? God will still sail us out. We are getting out of this. We will sail through. But the point I'm bringing across is this. Are we going to behave like uncircumcised people after this? When you look at Jeremiah, Jeremiah was saying, and I quote Jeremiah chapter 4 and verse 4. Prophet Jeremiah said, circumcise yourselves, circumcise yourselves to the Lord. And then he says that you may remove the four skins of your heart. That is serious. This is a man of God, Jeremiah, saying, circumcise yourselves to the Lord. Because it is the business of the Lord. When you hear of this covenant, it is God's covenant with man. And he says, when you do that, he's saying, you men of Judah and all those inhabitants of Jerusalem, do that circumcise yourselves to the Lord. Remove the foreskins. Every time circumcision is done, there is the foreskin removed. This Jeremiah talks of the foreskins of the heart, that which is covering the real thing of the heart, that which is covering, what could it be? The evils. Actually, he says, or else, or do that before, or else my anger comes to you like fire that no man can quench. So when circumcision is mentioned, brothers and sisters, spiritually in the spiritual world, we are talking about the matters of the heart. That foreskin that covers the heart, that God is trying to see you, he can't see you. The foreskin like the twigs and the leaves that Adam and Eve took to hide and to cover themselves until Genesis chapter 3 verse 9. God is asking Adam, where are you? We are looking at all this because sometimes there are four skins that cover our hearts when God wants to come through. When God wants to visit your community, people have covered their hearts with all manner of social things. This is how we have been for many years. This is how nations have behaved. 
people taking things for granted because their hearts are thick. May we circumcise our hearts, our lives, our bodies, circumcise ourselves to the Lord. Let's remove the foreskins of the heart. It is good to be clean and clear. It is good to be approachable even by the Spirit of God. It is good to be teachable. It is good to be open. It is good to have a clean heart. My brothers and sisters, could this be as a result of many things that we used to do? When we were feeling that we were free, taking things for granted, failing even to pray, failing to thank God, failing to appreciate God. I want to say at this time, even some men have taken their wives for granted many times. Are you alone? You never even remain thankful when you get home and you have a plate of food prepared. Now some of you, you could be learning the whole thing. This is a time you are discovering that's a lot of work even for that food to be prepared. Now you can watch them cooking. We have lessons to learn. In every circumcision camp, there is training. There is learning. Can I also say, some parents took teachers of their children for granted. Today we have all manner of comments. Other parents asking how do teachers handle children. Teachers handle hundreds and thousands. They handle all those numbers. You have only two or three or four or even one. And you are now crying. Asking when will schools be back. Can I tell you. That is a foreskin. We used to have these foreskins of the heart. Sometimes so stubborn, so thankless, we could not appreciate. Some teachers took their learners for granted. I want to tell you, they mean a lot to you. Any person that God brings across to your life, that person is so important, my brother, my sister. Let's stop now taking others for granted. May I also say this? What of the churches? We took church gatherings and fellowships so much for granted. We were not serious when servants of God, preachers, anointed men, true servants of God, they have prayed and fasted for summons to have the word only to come and fight some empty seats while members have taken time even to go for social gatherings. They have gone to do all manner of things. They don't want to be in church. Today, you would like to gather. Things are not the way you want. May we learn in this circumcision camp. When this man was circumcised by Joshua, I'm sure they were being prepared now that you have come to a new territory, now that you have come to this place, this is the land of promise. But there are still a giants to conquer. We have people occupying the land. Can I tell you the blessings and the package of breakthrough for the year 2020 and the years to come? It is not on a silver platter. We have come to this year. We are in the year 2020. And this is a preparation ground for us to know there is some work to do. We must fight the battle. Every promise is found in the land and the territory of giants. No wonder you fight people like David. When he saw a giant, the first question he asked, what has been promised? 
to the one who will kill uh, this giant. Because he discovered when you see a giant, you see the promise. Where we have a promise, we also have giants to conquer. And we cannot do that if we are uncircumcised. If we are not members and partakers of the covenant of God. What am I saying? Don't you see David when he looked at Goliath? He said, and who is this? An uncircumcised human being. In other words, David is saying, I have all the reasons to adorate you, Goliath. I have all the reasons to discredit you, Goliath, because you are not circumcised. You are not a party. You are not a member of the covenant. I want to appreciate as I continue to show you clearly this particular dimension of this covenant. The Bible says in verse 9 of Joshua chapter 5, And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day have I ruled away the reproach of Egypt from off you. Wherefore, the name of the place is called Gilgal unto this day. Now, during the period of healing, due to the effect of the knife. When these men were in the camp and they were getting healing, Joshua had God telling him that today, today, when you see that word today there, it is not a specific day of 24 hours. It is actually a season. But this time now, you have experienced this. God is saying, I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt. Rolling away. What is this reproach? Remember, and uh, somebody asked me one question. Why did God bring the children of Israel through this long route through the wilderness? And the, when you look at, ge you know, geographically, if you look at the map, the children of Israel would have taken at most 21 days getting from the land of Egypt to Canaan, Israel. They would have done that walking at least or at most 21 days. It was possible. But why take more than 40 years? There is a reason and this is what I want you to see when God is telling Joshua, now I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt. It is one thing to be delivered from Egypt and a different thing altogether for Egypt to be delivered out of you. Sometimes we live in places and with the people until we adopt and we live with the adaptations of their culture and the things they do, even their mentality, their mindset. So God wanted something out of this. He is telling Joshua now after circumcision, the attitude and the mentality of Egypt has been rolled away. Today, I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt. What does that mean? Can I put it clear here? A reproach is not only shame. A reproach is what we call the expression of disapproval. When somebody is reproaching you, is not only doing you to remain or to look shameful. That person is trying to disapprove you. Giving an example of Hannah and Penina. 
when Penina was reproaching Hannah due to childlessness. If you look at it clearly, Penina was trying to prove to the family and to the community and even to everybody in the village that Hannah has no approval of bearing a child. That reproach meant that. And I know I'm talking to some people who have gone through a lot of reproach. Some people have tried to shame you and bringing you to public shame, trying to disapprove you. But I'm here to tell you, after this moment, after this day called the season we are going through, some of you are going to celebrate. You are going to give testimonies because God will show you a sign of approval. You will not remain forever disapproved either by your critics or your enemies. I want you to know God has an intention. In this circumcision camp, God is announcing that I'm now rolling away the reproach. That reproach of Egypt, that mentality that you could have adopted from your fathers in the wilderness, it is now rolled away. That foreskin that has been covering your heart, that God is not able to see you through, he's not able to work his works, in your life. Kenya, that foreskin that, have, that has hindered, covered you even from the light of the gospel, the shining of glory from our Father, God of heaven, that foreskin, that cover, that canopy of shame and reproach, that canopy of complaint, that canopy of godlessness, that canopy of devil worship, that canopy of all manner of witchcraft and sorcery. God says he is roaring it away. And the, the, the place called Gilgal, the place of four skins being rolled away, gonna be our station now where you are in that circumcision camp, my brother, my sister, we must accept this one fact that reproach and shame must be rolled away. I want to thank God for this thing. When I see this kind of uh, approach that God is saying have rolled away that reproach, what is it clear in the spiritual world? I, I, I want to look at this because in Romans chapter number 15 and verse 8, Romans chapter number 15 verse 8, now I see that Jesus Christ was a minister of circumcision. That is Apostle Paul talking about this. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. That promise that our fathers got, that promise that has been spoken and written, it is in a record, the promise of our salvation, the promise of our safety, the promise of our breakthrough, the promise of our healing, the promise of our good lives has been and will be confirmed by Jesus Christ, the minister of circumcision. And that is why I say it's a matter of, of the heart. When we talk of Jesus Christ, who comes into our lives, the Bible says, and whoever shall call upon his name shall be saved. And this Jesus is called the minister of circumcision. This is where Jesus will come. 
and by his grace because we are saved by grace through faith he is able now to work on your heart he is able to release the healing through this circumcision of our lives unto the Lord and this is why I say may every reproach I declare now in my capacity as a prophet and as a servant of God I speak to your family I speak to your house I speak to your marriage may every reproach may every shame be drawn away that reproach of not bearing children that reproach of no work no job that reproach of having your life short changed in all manner that life my sister of being dropped every time your relationship begins all of a sudden even when it is building all of a sudden it drops down and then you are crushed i want to tell you may that reproach be rolled away I'm talking of God who knows how to train us to get to our promise. You are there. That's what I'm saying. Our topic tonight being it is circumcision first. I, I want you to see that this experience where God is removing any disapproval. There are times we go through issues in life. And you fight even your own family members have disapproved you. You have become like a reject. You've become like the black sheep in the family. I want to tell you with God, there is no black sheep. God is able to restore you. God can change the goalposts. God can lift your life. God can show everybody that you are not what their opinions dictated. You belong to the might of God. And I see this. Once we embrace the circumcision camp, we will come out of those camps with this kind of a confession as we profess our faith that yes, we are in the Lord, the Lord of promise. Let me show you something in verse 10. And the children of Israel encamped in Gilgal and kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month at evening in the plains of Jericho. The Bible records of uh, Passover celebration. Remember Passover. <clears throat> they used to see this. Even in uh, those who left Egypt. They, they knew what was happening. Because it started on the night of their exit from Egypt. That's when Passover began. You remember the meaning of Passover was actually in simple terms a rescue from the angel of death the angel went moving and he was passing over leaving the houses that had the sign of the blood and that is what he used to do he could see blood and then would go over that house, get to where there is no blood, and he could now say this house belongs to the Egyptians. And that's where he could kill the firstborn. What do you see? A similarity of things. When there is circumcision, blood is shed. When you talk of Passover, the lamb the Passover lamb had to die. Blood was shed. 
For the Bible says in Hebrews that there is no remission of sin without the shedding of blood. Now, in this scenario, once they were through with the shedding of their own blood, circumcision, on the 14th day of the month, that used to be the day of celebration of Passover, they celebrated here. Imagine, they are healed, they are in the camp, they are through, but before they start eating any product of the Lord, they must celebrate Passover. Passover carries a great percentage of what we call the expression of deliverance and salvation. And that's what we see, brothers and sisters, that these men and even with their families, now it is time to enjoy Passover. They are now going to celebrate to see what we saw happening or what our fathers experienced on the night of Exodus. It was great salvation. That's where we belong. That's where we come from. We originate from there. We are men and women of celebration. We are men and women of the covenant of deliverance. So they celebrated Passover. And the Bible records, I'm coming to close of this, verse number 11, and they did eat, we are still in Joshua, chapter 5, verse 11, and they did eat the old corn of the lad, not manna now. They are eating the old corn of the lad. Hey, this is so good to hear this. On the morrow, which morrow? The day after the celebration of Passover, they had unleavened cakes and parched corn in the same day. You see, this time they are now eating. After celebrating Passover, they are now released to eat what was now in the land they have come to, the land of promise, the land of Canaan. But look at verse 12. And the manna stopped on that day after they had eaten of the old corn of the land, neither had the children of Israel manna any more. But they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. That year. What is, that, what is this telling us? That the moment they finished celebrating the Passover, now the next meal they were to take was not the food of the angels. It was not quails. It was not manna. They were, they were to eat now what was produced in that land. But let me show you something. This was not out of their effort. This food they found in granaries, in stores, kept as harvest by the people of that land. So it was a shock to them. Why? Because in the wilderness, they used to collect food for each and every day. They could not take more for two days, apart from the sixth day, when they were taking together for seventh day, which was the Sabbath. Any other day, you try to take more than for one day, and it was going rotten. So they are shocked to find we are in a land where we can have food in store, we can eat and have some remains, and we eat the following day. This was a totally new phenomenon for them. They had not seen this. Why? Because it's the first time they're experiencing this. Can I tell you without any doubt, even after what you are going through, my friends, we are going to fight some shocking things. 
God will shock us, surprise us, even with the new dimensions of blessings. This is my conviction and I'm encouraging you. Let's hold on to the faith. Do not despair. Do not lose hope. Even in that company where you have been told, first of all, you are suspended until this pandemic is over. I want to tell you, don't panic. Things will work out. God is going to give us even new dimensions of industries after this. Like I said here another time, what you will find is that God will prepare us and he is preparing us for the next wave of revival which will prepare for the return of our master Jesus Christ. So there is going to be a season to enjoy and to be happy, to find grace and favor. And we find such surprises that we can see things where abundance becomes our portion. I keep saying that when they were in Egypt, they used to have less than enough. When they came to the wilderness, they used to get just enough. But now they have come to the land of Canaan, the land of promise, where it is the land of more than enough. May God take you to that level. May God elevate you that in your faith, as you continue confessing the faith of salvation, my friend, may God lift you to that point whereby you will see keenly according to the favor of God, such moments of more than enough. I say again, it is circumcision first. First, it has to happen before you come to this enjoyment. And in summary, let me ask you, are you ready to embrace the circumcision camp? where you get training for better things, where you get this kind of understanding. I want you to say, I, I, I need to enjoy this camp. Yes, lockdown has hit us. Everyone feels this is not what I would like. But look at this. Even those that are in quarantine, some of you could be watching, I want to tell you, wherever you are, those days will be over. It shall be well with you. Even now I'm speaking to them. They may not hear me. They could be in the ICU. Even those victims of COVID-19. I want to declare in the name of Jesus, there is power of healing. May God touch you. May God heal you. This is the time we are saying that the hand of God that is not too short to deliver is stretched out upon your life. May you receive this healing. I want to believe that together as we have gone through this chapter 5 of Joshua that we are learning something. If you could be having some pain inflicted on you treat it as a circumcision camp if you could have gone through such kind of shameful actions acted against you words spoken against you people trying to criticize you and even to discredit you trying to abase you, to bring you to your lowest moment. Do not overreact for nothing. Treat it as a circumcision camp. And you are going to come out of that place behaving better, behaving in a mature way, behaving in an elevated platform better than you are the worst of all can be if you take it negatively 
if you start thinking it is the end of my life, if you start thinking of suicide, my friend, I tell you, you will lose even the package of the promise. You have walked all this way. You have been in the wilderness. You have been through River Jordan. When it was flooded, God gave you victory. You came out. This time you are in the camp of circumcision. Hold on. Because the perseverance of your life and your faith will produce your maturity. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his face shine upon you. For this is my confidence that we are there to remove every foreskin that God may have access through us, that we may communicate to us, that we may have it clear with God. Let me pray with us today. And I'll begin by praying with you. If you are there and you have never surrendered your life to Jesus, I'm so thankful as I'm talking now because for about 21 days, I've now prayed through the phone with the six people calling my line, calling my number. The numbers displayed there on the screen, the, the central and the middle number that can get me directly. And they have called me and we've prayed with them. Now they are new creatures. They are born again. I salute them. Do not hesitate to give your life to Jesus. This is the best moment. It is a time that you need to surrender to him. It is his will that you be transformed. And I want to pray with you. If you have never given your life to Jesus. And say this after me. Jesus. I thank you. For you died for me. Today, I come to you just as I am. I surrender my life to you. Take my name and write it in the book of life. Give me the Holy Spirit to lead and to guide me that from today I will serve you. I remove every foreskin of the heart. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. Let me pray with all of us. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to present every viewer to you. And I thank you because of the grace of God that is sufficient to each one of us. My Lord and my God, I want to honor your name that remains above every other name. When we learn this topic, that it is circumcision first, God, I know you have spoken to your people in different ways. But one thing summarizes everything, that you have promised us a package of blessings. You've promised us the Lord. And we will partake of it as a nation, as a continent, as a planet, as a community, as a church. God, we take your word and we reflect on it, believing that in this circumcision camp, we will not 
be the same again. We are coming out mature men. We are coming out men and women of great value. People ready to be thankful. We will stop taking things for granted. We murmured and complained when things were dropping from heaven. When manna was available for us, we complained. When we visited our offices of duty, saying we are getting tired. Today, the offices have been closed. Forgive us, O oh God. But after this circumcision camp, Lord, even our tongues will be mature. Our thinking, our thought patterns will be mature. We promise you, Father, that we shall behave according to your will. This is our desire. I pray that you visit every home, visit every house, visit every estate, every village. God, visit every nation. We are praying in the name of Jesus that it shall be well with us for this is the promise you gave me as your servant as we began the year 2020 it is going to be the year of unlimited harvest but first circumcision i want to thank you even as i appreciate everything you've taught us oh god that in all circumstances we give thanks unto God for this is your will for us in Christ Jesus. That is why I thank you even for the current quarantine, current lockdown and even limited movement. This is for a purpose. We appreciate this. We embrace this. Even as a circumcision camp. For we have one confidence. This is not going to be permanent. It shall not be forever. We are getting healed. Healing. Just like the men who were circumcised by Joshua. They remained in the same place in the camp until they healed. God, it is within you. It is within your capacity even to blow once and this COVID-19 is gone. But we allow you, Jehovah, even as we beseech your mercies, it is our prayer that according to your program, according to your plan, according to your will, Master, help us that we may go through the whole process of healing. And once we are healed and we celebrate this Passover that took place on the 14th day, just like many are rejoicing, those that are in quarantine for 14 days. And on the 14th day, their hearts are jumping and pumping with joy that they are getting out. We want to declare, Jehovah, even in the spiritual world, we shall celebrate our 14th day Passover so that we get to enjoy this promise that you give us. I also pray that you start God surprising your people even with miracles, package of blessings like the children of Israel were shocked to find themselves in a land where food could be stored for the following day unlike the wilderness. Father, we thank and we bless you. For this I pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
And the church said, Amen. My viewers, thank you very much. May God bless you. I also want to appreciate you even for your attention and even sharing this particular page and this particular link. This is what we say. Whatever you hear with me, you become a witness and share with others. And I also take you to the Bible. Go back to the scriptures. Be like the Christians of Berea who could go back to the scriptures to prove what the preacher had was okay, was right. I am subject to that. I'm a teacher of the word and I like when you also check and prove the truth of the word of God. God bless you. And like I say, generally members and everybody else, well wishes, it is also time to give. Do not hesitate to use our MPESA till number 904-260. We are doing this. We have a lot to do. All the projects, they must continue. And we believe it shall be well. Let me also announce to generally members, remember, the first Sunday of May, it will be our first checkpoint for the project of our 8th of November where we want to purchase the land for the church. We will not stop because of whatever we are going through. This project remains. Remember what we pledged, it's a promise, but we have the first checkpoint as we agreed that will be first Sunday of May. Let's keep remembering and everything you give towards that program and that project shall be well acknowledged not only on the desk of the bishop but also in heaven. God bless you. I love you all. Shalom.